My understanding is that you have not yet covered Faraday's law in the lecture class. So I'm going to explain the basic idea of it and then it'll make more sense once you hit that in the class. So the first thing, let me let me just explain Faraday's law. First in words, it's an idea. Remember all all of these physics concepts are ideas that can be described in words and then there's an equation and we're going to work with the equation, but you should always think of the equation as sort of the executive summary. The equation summarizes everything and also it's a tool because you can use algebra to do other things with it. But if you don't know what the principle or the idea behind it represents, you'll have more difficulty doing things. You'll be able to follow the algebra and do the math, but you won't necessarily know what the meaning is. So you need to know more than just the equation. You need to know the idea behind the equation. In fact, uh, here's a pro tip that, that I give all my students. If you're preparing for a, a physics exam, like your final or a midterm, and you're having trouble with one of the equations or ideas, you can do flashcards just like uh, in Spanish class, where in, in, in language class you would write the word on one side and you would flip over and write what it means. In uh, physics class, you can write the equation on the on the blank side, flip it over, and where the lines are, here's the challenge. Write what it means in words, no symbols, no equations. Every time you want to use a symbol, use words that describe what it means. Every time you want to, and, and don't just write words that describe the equation like this times that, um, but write out the meaning of it. Write a, write a paragraph and in words describing what the principle that is described by that equation. Okay, we'll get to that. Um, how do I describe in words Faraday's law? Let me say it first. A changing magnetic flux causes an EMF, an induced EMF, around a closed loop. And to slow things down, because you think better when we go a little slower, Faraday's law. This is why I like chalk and a chalkboard. Okay, a changing magnetic flux causes an EMF. Remember, that's an electromotive force which will measure in volts. So informally, I'd say there's a voltage but technically we'll call it the EMF. Uh, it causes an EMF um, around a closed loop. Now, it might be a closed loop in empty space, but usually it's a closed loop in a wire, and so then there's a, a voltage difference between, two, say, two ends of the wire, and now you can make electricity flow. Instead of having a chemical induced EMF like a battery, we have uh, this Faraday's law of EMF. It has to be a changing magnetic, not just field. One way to do it is with a magnetic field, but it has to be a flux. And flux is more than just the magnetic field. It's the amount of magnetic field going through a particular area. And those can change by changing the strength of the magnetic field changing the area. Maybe the loop gets smaller or bigger. Or you can change the orientation of the area to the flux because only, only the magnetic field that's actually going perpendicular to the area counts for flux. And you'll learn more about this when you get to this in, in the textbook. Okay, so it has to be a changing. This, this is the fundamental principle of Faraday's law. So I have an example here. I've wound some wire, just a coil of some wire here. And in fact, it's, let's count the windings. It starts here, goes all the way around, comes up to here, that's one. And then two, three, four, five. So I would say n equals five for this piece of wire. And now let's imagine that I have this nail that, that is magnetized. And when I insert the nail into, into the coil, the flux now there, that went, uh, goes up. So when the, when the nail's far away, there's very little magnetic field going through the loops. And as it gets closer, the magnetic field, remember this is a, this 
nail is magnetized. And so then it, the flux goes up and goes up and goes up and goes up and goes up. Now, once we get the magnet into the loop, and even if I move it, the flux doesn't change. If you think of magnetic field lines, the same number of field lines are going through the loops, and so there's no change. However, now what if I back out and take the, take the uh, magnet out of the coils? Now the flux is going down as I remove the magnet, and so that will induce an EMF. And this is how a generator works. This is, this is how a lot of uh, uh, mechanical, uh, well, uh, electro, uh, uh, electrical generation schemes work using Faraday's law here. So we could, we could hook this up. This, this wouldn't provide very much power, but we could hook it up to a voltmeter and measure the changes. Okay, now what about the direction? There's a whole rule for the direction of the EMF, because you can imagine, depending upon whether I put the north pole end or, the, or a south pole end here, that would change which way the current would flow through the wire if we made it a circuit. And if I increase the flux or decrease the flux, that will have opposite changes. So let me just state in words again what the direction is. The induced EMF is such that if it were to create a current, and I have to say if because sometimes it doesn't, if it were to create a current, the direction of the current would create a magnetic field that would oppose the change in flux. So the induced EMF has a direction. So this is which way the current would flow if a current could flow, such that if a current would flow, that current would create a magnetic field. Now, right-hand rule for the magnetic field of a current, okay? If the, at the, that if a current would flow, the magnetic field produced by that current would oppose the change in flux. That's very general but also confusing. So if, if by oppose it means if the flux is large and is deep but is decreasing, the magnetic field would add to the flux to try to increase it to keep it from decreasing. Let's say the flux is low. And the but uh, that's and and the flux is increasing, then the direction of the current would actually be opposite to uh, create a magnetic field that would try to decrease the flux to try to keep it the same. This is why an induction coil can be thought of as having a uh, a mag magnetic um, a momentum that keeps things doing what they're doing already. Because of because basically of, of Faraday's law, and this has its own name. This is Lenz's law. So you'll need the the right hand rule for the direction of uh, the magnetic field created by a current to uh, figure out which way the magnetic field would be by the current, and then you you orient it so that the any change in flux is is opposed. If it's decreasing, you try to increase it. If it's increasing it tries to decrease it. Okay, so that's Faraday's law in words.